Hey, thank you all for joining us. My name is Tim Haggerty, CEO, founder of Teaming Pro, and uh, we'd like to welcome you to the very first Teaming Pro podcast, where we have a very exciting guest with us today. His name is Jeff Holmes, who is the Small Business Program Manager for RQ Construction. Jeff Holmes, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you very much for being on the show. Okay. Okay, so uh, Jeff, um, not a lot of people uh, know this yet, but they're going to know by the end of this uh, program, you're a very important person within the federal contracting space. I'm going to say that because uh, I know RQ Construction and so, so do a lot of other federal contractors. But what I'd like to do first, um, can I have uh, or ask a couple of questions like um, about how you conduct uh, your, your particular job, your particular role within RQ Construction, but I'd like to first start with RQ itself. What, uh, what, what does RQ like to focus on within the federal contracting market? Sure. No, that's great. Um, we solely focus on Department of Defense work. So we were, we were purchased a number of years back by a larger construction company. And uh, we have, at this time, uh, 26 plus years of experience of working with the DOD. So uh, all of our construction is with um, the Department of Defense, and at this point, primarily with NAVFAC. So we have a lot of work with NAVFAC and Army Corps of Engineer. And that's awesome. Um, and just so people know, okay, so the kind of contracts that RQ Construction yes. goes after, you guys go after some pretty big, pretty big contracts, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it's grown over the years. You know, you you kind of learn. You start out and you think of a five million dollar contract as, oh my goodness, we're never going to be able to do this, and <laughs> and then you find out, you know, that it, it takes the same number of people on a team for a, a smaller dollar. Uh, amount in a contract as it does is a hundred million dollars. And so um, as time has gone on, we uh, we've taken on some larger and larger contracts. Yes. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. All right. So now with that, okay. Now being the small business uh, program manager here. So let's talk a little bit about your job. So like, you know, what is it that you do on a daily basis? Like, like your main focus, what is your main, main, main role, main kind of job? What is it that you try to get done? Yeah. Well, you know, I think one of the things that I hear a lot as I travel around the country, and, and that is one of the things I do, it's not one of the main things, but it's one of the fun things that I get to do oh, is go and, yeah, and hear from actual small businesses is that it's really hard to know how to connect and how to get their foot in the door with different companies. So I would say the majority of, of what I do on a daily basis is monitor uh, who's signing up in our bidding software. Uh, who's emailing us, making sure that um, they don't fall into the black hole that they feel like uh, is what happens to a lot of them, you know, when they reach out to other large businesses. So um, as much as I can, I, I engage on a personal, in a personal way with those people that will reach out to us. Oh, that's excellent. Okay. So now, all right. So then with that, okay. So RQ Construction is going out there. You're bidding on these, uh, these, these contracts, right? Mm -hmm. um, yep. On, let's, let's just throw a number out there. So like, let's, you know, let's say it's a large contract, like how, like how many just on, on average, like subcontractors or small businesses would, might you have on a contract? Yeah, it actually doesn't change a whole lot depending on the dollar size of a contract. Um, we don't really self-perform much of anything. Uh, there are some regions in which we do, and we've had to, and that's just recent in the last couple of years um, due to labor constraints uh, within the market. But um, there would be, I would say that about the same, there'd probably be between 30 and 40 diff uh, different uh, small businesses that, that would cover a number of different scopes. Now that's excellent. Okay, so thirty to forty. So now our yep. uh, our two construction has been in business for for a nice little while. So like y'all have a good sized database of of contractors that you've worked with in the past, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Of course now, of course now you're using Teamy Pro, and you can find anyone anywhere. Oh my goodness, <laughs> oh, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but all right, but all right. So that's but that's 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 generally how the market works, right? So like the large mm -hmm. construction guys or the large primes have an outreach in some cases to try to false find small businesses, right? Yep, but yep. you had just just mentioned that uh, sometimes they're, you know, like you want them to come to you. 
you want the small businesses to come into your portal or to come to you or, or yes. to somehow start engaging with our queue, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, just, just to throw this out there, would, would you say that that's something that you would welcome? Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like everything in this day and age. Everything is uh, automated. Um, our database is literally thousands of, of companies uh, because we work nationwide and we actually work um, outside of the U.S. as well. So our database is huge. And in order to manage that, um, we have tools that we use. Uh, teaming pros being being one of them. Oh, but uh, yeah, yeah. So um, the, our bid invite system, you want to get into that. You have to get into that, yeah. matter of fact. So the first step, and if, if we're there in this part of the interview, the first step that anybody, if, if they came to me and they say, how do I work with R2? I would tell them, go to our website. It's just, mm -hmm. you just have to remember a name. It's r2construction.com. Mm -hmm. And there is a tab for subcontractors. Go to that tab. As soon as you click on it, it's going to open up to a, a form that you need to fill out. And I always want to remind people, especially if you're a small business, and I don't know why they do this, but it, you got to kind of scroll a little bit at the bottom of that form. There's a place for certifications and certifications are going to tell us what size standard you are. If you're small, if you're a woman owned, if you're veteran owned, service disabled veteran, hub zones, you know, all that kind of stuff. You have an opportunity to let us know. And please don't forget that. That's an important part of uh, of the uh, uh, enrollment process. As soon as you're done, all you have to do is hit enroll and you're automatically in our system at that point. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. Now, mm -hmm. when that when that happens, you're made aware, hey, we have another small business that just came through the portal. Let me go check them out and see. And then that's 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 how the connection's made, right? And you know, because like yep. you guys will come in and that's that's the process. Yep. And so when you ask what do I spend a lot of my time doing during the day, is I monitor those emails because I automatically get an email from the the system and it tells okay. me so and so has enrolled. And I give them a call and I have to be honest with you, most of the time they're surprised to death. They're just like, what? I just hit send, you know, or I just hit submit. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, we work hard. It doesn't happen every time. I can't promise that it's going to happen like that every time. But we work hard and let you know that you didn't just uh, enroll into some deep, dark hole where you're going right. to get lost. So. No, yeah, you know, all right. So like, it, and it, it sounds like, you know, circling back a little bit to what, what you had just said before. It sounds like where like you would normally not self-perform any of this stuff. You would go out there, you get the work, you have the reputation, you get the contracts. But are you saying that in some cases you're you're kind of forced into doing that because you said labor shortage? So because there aren't some subcontractors or small businesses around to, to go and take on that work? Yeah, and I would say primarily that is in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. And so that's a very unique situation. Gotcha. Um, we're on a military base, you know, on an island <laughs> in the Caribbean. Sure. And um, it, there's not a lot of um, opportunities for people to subcontract. So there we do self-perform everything. There are, um, there was, a, you know, literally like $3 billion that was dumped into Camp Lejeune, you know, two years ago for hurricane and disaster relief work. Okay. Well, that whole region is completely tapped out. And there are a lot of companies who, you know, I, I mean, I've talked to electrical companies that have told me that if they could hire a hundred people, they would hire them today to be really? able to do the work. And so uh, mm -hmm. in order to, in order to meet some of that, 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 lacking because to be honest some subcontractors is just telling us we're sorry you know we've we're backlogged for over a year year and a half and uh you know as you know if you've worked with the government um everybody has a time that you have to get it done or else that big ld comes in and it mm -hmm. starts getting really expensive when you haven't delivered so right. um so yes we do we do self-perform and it's not consistent so it's not like you're going to see us self-performing the same trade throughout that region. There are times we'll self-perform, uh, and then there are other times we're in the same boat. We don't have the capacity, and we find a small business or another business that does have the capacity, and they will get that. But uh, uh, I, I would I would preface it with this: Don't be afraid. Just because we self-perform some work, 
don't be afraid that there isn't a ton out there for you to still oh, do. There actually, is, is, yeah. Well, yeah. So I actually see that as a little bit of an opposite way, right? Because it sounds like the, the, the self, self-performing is not really part of y'all's model. Like it's something, it sounds like it's something you have to do and you will do if you have to. Yep. But you would much prefer to have a strong network of small businesses and subcontractors that, that take on this word. That's the model, right? That yeah. Like- and in certain regions, we, we, we do not self-perform anything. So yeah, yeah. on the West Coast, everything is um, subcontracted out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so with, yeah, it just sounds like, right, like it's more of a backup. If you got to do it, you're going to do it because, hey, job's got to get done. Job's yeah. got to get done at the end of the day. And it's going to get done because RQ Construction, yep. that's how you keep your reputation because you guys are great. It's going to get yeah. done. This is one yeah. of the other things, too, you know, you know because... Um, and, you know, one of the reasons why I really wanted to have you on here too, Jeff, you know, because mm-hmm. not only do you have a great reputation, but RQ is a great reputation, right? So what I really, Thank really you. wanted to uh, do was, what you know, set a good precedent, right? It's where, like, it's not the same situation with every other prime federal contractor out there. We all know that, like, some, you know, some sometimes you know, different companies do business in different ways, right? They're mm-hmm. all, all different little caveats in there. But mm-hmm. when someone does business, especially a small business, does business with RQ, um, they are going to get exactly what's in that contract. There is no anything behind the scenes. It's straight mm-hmm. up. You guys go in here and perform and do a great job. Hey, not only is it great on this contract, but we got more for you. It's that kind of stuff, right? And it's proven yep. over and over and over again. Yeah, we have a lot of repeat uh, subcontractors that work for us for a number of years. Yeah. Now, okay. Mm-hmm. See, now you're really, really hitting into like, you know, some of the stuff I just find so interesting because- yeah. Really, like, really, what I want the small businesses to like know. Let's you know, say, say you're a small business um, construction company. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. I know several here in Norfolk, uh, Tidewater area, mm-hmm. where they might not be as familiar with federal contracting. They might have a SAM record. They, you know, they might have dipped their toe a little bit, but they're used to commercial. They're used to resident. You know, they're they're, they're used to non-government work. Mm-hmm. If 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 you were going to talk to someone or you know talk, talk to a small business, you might have a great reputation. They're just thinking about coming into the federal space. What's maybe uh, some advice coming from someone who's reputable, who's done this, you know, uh, sure. the company behind you? What are some of the things that 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 maybe they should know first in order for them to, to get the fastest maybe foothold to start doing business with a company like RQ? Sure. You know, I think you kind of have to look at it as this is a long game. Mm-hmm. Anytime you're going to get in a in in working in a federal market, it's a long game. And so look at the different components or the parts of that that you need to get your foot into. And I would say in speaking about RQ, uh, specifically your best um, point of contact are your estimators. And the way that we send out our bid invites. So once you're in our system and you get a bid invite from us, the person you get that bid invite from, that's your estimator. So you will speak directly with the person who's handling your scope of work. It's one of the benefits, matter of fact, that I always tote f- about RQ is that uh, uh, you, you're going to have a designated um, estimator throughout the process that you will be working with. And I just tell people, listen, they're, they're awesome people. They love teaching you. They love learning from you. I mean, we don't want to assume like we, we know, we don't know everything. Matter of fact, we need subcontractors because we know very little about, you know, what they are, they are um, experts in. Um, Yeah. And so um, in terms of how to navigate the whole federal side of things, uh, your estimator is, um, really important for you to establish a relationship with. So I say, call them, email them, bug the heck out of them. They don't care. <laughs> Matter of fact, they love engagement. Okay. And, and, and when we look at our, we have a, you know, we have a tool that we use. We have tools that we use for, for um, tracking stuff. Mm-hmm. It logs all that stuff. So the, the more you're engaged, it actually ranks you. And it okay. says, hey, this person is, is staying engaged. This person has already done this. They've done that. Well, if you're an estimator and you're looking for a sub, what are you going to do? You're going to go after the people who show the most interest and who are most promising to get, you know, to, to provide you with a, sub, uh, a bid in that. So I would say your first step is get to know your estimator. The second step in our queue, and, and I will be very frank and honest about this, this is one of the harder jumps, is that because of the way we do business, 
our operations runs a little separate from our estimating department. Yeah. So it's important early on to, to learn who are the PMs that are going to be working in your region. And I'm more than happy. This is where I can come in. I can come in and I can set up a meet and greet with you, with a PM. Um, we try to protect them a little bit that way because sometimes they just get inundated. And especially with what we do with design build, uh, you, you remember I said this is a long game. And so uh, the first six months of most projects are just in design. There's very little that's, that's done actually at the site. It's all done in, uh, in an office, you know, just getting, gotcha. getting, trying to get us to 50% design. Once we get 50% design, now you can look at a drawing and, and you can actually do a takeoff and, and um, uh, that's where the wheels start going. And yeah. Like start counting hammers and stuff, right? Basically. Right. right. And, right. And, and by that point, we will know who the PM is as well. And that's a great time for us to make an introduction and, um, okay. and, and be able to start helping them develop a relationship with the PM. Now, now just, you know, just, just for the companies coming in new PM for these guys means... Uh, project manager. Project manager. Right? Yeah. So yeah. the project manager runs the job. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And, and so just so everyone knows too, especially if you're new to federal contracting, sometimes and it's like PM here, uh, construction project manager, sometimes you'll hear PM on like an IT uh, related project and, the, and that might be program manager. Essentially okay. the, the exact same thing, right? The person that runs yeah. that, 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 that particular piece of work, that job. And I would, I would say the, the important part of it is they are the people who decide who's going to get the job yeah. and they make sure and they decide when you get paid. And yeah, that's how, very you know, important too. how much you're going to get paid and all that kind of stuff. And, and I would just add to this, you know, one of the benefits that I always want to tote is that we know that as a small business, one of the toughest stuff is cash flow. You know, I mean, it's just yeah. reality, you know, and when you have to pay um, prevailing wages and, and stuff, I mean, it just kills you. And so yes. um, we have made a commitment to all of our businesses, not just small, but to all of our businesses that we will pay you within seven days of, of us being um, receiving payment from the government. So as long as you've got all your documents in and everything is in order, if we get paid, you get paid within seven days. See, now you, you are circling back to like a perfect point too, because that right there, I think, is a differentiator between a, a prime contractor. That's one really great differentiator that you mm -hmm. guys choose choose to make sure that you push out there, right? To make sure that, yeah. like, hey, this is a reputable company that is going to be paying what they said they're going to pay. And in fact, we're going to make sure that you get it as quick as you can because you're small business. You're doing a great job. We want to make sure that you you are do, keep doing that great job. So you yeah. guys are that kind of partner when it comes down to it, right? Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. So like as 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 these small companies or these small businesses either both come into the market or 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 they're looking to expand their 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 actual footprint, right? Are aren't those some of the hallmarks of how to recognize a good prime, right? Some companies that do that, right? Making sure that the small business is going to get paid. Because yep. we have we have we have to say, I mean, there's the federal market is a large, large, large market, right? And so there are a lot of players out there. And so this, and this is one of the reasons why we really like to engage with, with primes, uh, just like our Q sure. here. And, you know, cause small, a small business as we feel the team pro is like the backbone of everything that we do. Like we, we're very sure. extremely interested in making sure that that keeps getting supported and built up. Right. You know, because we actually, you know, cause we believe with small businesses more like innovation and more um, sure. better pricing structures. Right. And, and we would agree with you on all that kind of stuff too. Yeah. Yeah, no, right. Yeah, 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 it's great. And 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 it really, really gives like yeah, if, if if you think about the cycle, a small company can come in and ultimately grow into an RQ. I mean, that's the idea. For right. Sure. And actually, and that's one of the other reasons why I'd love to have you on here today too, Jeff, because RQ is that kind of company at the same time. I don't think that you would ever be actively um, interested in keeping a company down so you could just keep using their services versus helping them grow and flourish. Because when that happens and you're an excellent partner to that small business, now you have an excellent partner that's an even bigger player within the uh, space. And like, you can do even more. Like, would you say yeah. that, that that's one of the perspectives from our, from our Q construction as when, as you're looking oh, at yeah. like that? Yeah, it's been, matter of fact, it's been rough uh, the last five years or so, the economy and especially the work in the DOD market has been so good. 
Mm -hmm. um, there's been quite a few of our small businesses that have graduated that are no yeah, longer right. small. <laughs> so yeah, but it goes good. It goes great, right? It it's good for them. I mean, it's not right. like there's, you know, they're still getting plenty of work, but mm -hmm. but they're no longer small. Yeah, yeah. But so 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 with RQ though, you guys do need a healthy number of good subcontractors that 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 come through your pipeline. You're a yep. good partner, so, you, so you're going to make sure that like all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted and people are getting mm -hmm. paid for the work that they're doing and everyone just needs to basically be a grown up and come and do their job and then and like everything's going to be awesome. That's essentially how it works through yeah. the process with RQ and with, with the small businesses, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so more yeah. of that. So now, can we just circle back to the estimators just really quick? You see, because... Sure having these small businesses trying trying to market RQ out there, right? Like how, like, first of all, how, how do you guys get these small businesses to recognize that, oh, hey, I need to go to the website and fill out the supplier thing. It's main, it's mainly the estimators who are boots on the ground. Is, would, you, would, would that be accurate? Yeah, they do a lot of that. Uh, they spend a lot of time on, on the phone talking with people. Okay. And, um, and uh, I would say a lot of it comes through our bidding software. You know, so when we put out the bid, um, we're looking for the responses. So our software is really smart. Uh, yeah. we, 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 we know when somebody actually opens an email. We know if they never do open an email. Mm -hmm. And uh, on an average basis, and I, and I can say this because I use these numbers in our proposals, on an average basis, there's at least 1,500 emails that go out to small businesses. For and any given job for on, for a on, task or? on any given job that we do, there's at least 1,500 wow. that go out to small businesses, okay. and um, and that's just small businesses. Now the percentages will break down as we get into different categories, but there are a ton of opportunities. And there's matter of fact, there's so many responses. The estimators really use the tool to measure engagement, <clears throat> so they're looking yeah. at. Okay, who opened up the drawings? Who's accepted the bid invite? Because it'll tell them. It tells us, oh, you know, they've accepted it. Well, you know, if an estimator has, um, let's say they have two or three scopes of work they're responsible for. Mm -hmm. And out of that, you know, they, they probably have three or 400 emails that went out inviting people. Well, they narrow that down based upon the information that they're gleaning from the software. And say, okay, here's somebody that's downloaded the drawings. Maybe I should give them a call. Say, yeah. hey, I'm your estimator. I'm really, I appreciate the fact that there's some interest there. You have any questions? Hey, let's let's talk early. You know, I'm more than happy to talk to you about scope. Um, uh, anything, any kind of questions you know, that way. So, I mean, really, if if you think about that perspective, you know, it, it's a very proactive perspective from RQ's um, point, right? To where it's like, okay, hey like you guys have tools in place to measure that kind of as soon as there's any kind of action or any kind of engagement you guys are made aware and then you take action on that to say and then you reach out hey i hey you know this, this looks great we, you know this if you're interested in talking about getting more detail like you guys are, are that's that's part of your process as well too right i mean so yeah that's sure. very very proactive so shows actually the interest right to where like and uh you know and really like like the need on the small business side to be able to get good qualified subcontractors in there for sure okay now with that okay so what what are some of the bigger things because i really really just want want to start to just lay a bit of a foundation especially for new companies coming in because we you know we, we really do need some new companies, I mean, I, I think within the federal space, you know, some new competition, some, some new innovation, some new skill sets, right, uh, to come into the market. Construction is such a huge field, right? So um, what is it that these small businesses can do that'll make them stand out to the estimators beyond the whole clicking and then like uh, coming in, but like, are there any, or is there anything that the small business can do to make sure that, that they get recognized, um, even if they're not in your portal or, or something else? Like, how, you know, what's, what's, what's something that your estimators can uh, actually look for that actually says, oh, this guy looks pretty good? Yeah, no, that's a great question, Tim. Um, and I would say one of the answers to that is a little tough, and that is your past, your past performance. Okay. okay. You know, so <clears throat> just like it is for us, um, it's really hard to get into the federal market as a prime. Matter of fact, if you don't have past performance, it's almost impossible. You have to subcontract to start to get in in this day and age. Mm -hmm. 
One hundred percent. Now, no, no. Before we leave that, okay. So mm -hmm. now within the construction field, okay. Let's you know yep. say 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 I take that use case. Uh, you know, there's a uh, roofing company that that does residential yep. and wants to come in and start doing something on the federal side. Yeah. Can, can they use their past performance in their commercial world to come in and and and, and say yes, we do this kind of work within the federal and use that within the federal thing? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you know how to do roofing, it's it's no different on a federal job than it is in a commercial job. The, right. the, the nuances that are a little different when you go to the federal is that there there is there's more paperwork. You know, safety right. is a huge issue. You know, you're not going to get away with being sloppy with your safety. You're going to be paying prevailing wages or, you know, in some regions, um, actually, the wages are higher than what the government uh, is requiring. So the payroll is a big issue. You're going to have to understand what certified payroll looks like and how to do that. So those are all things that we come alongside of you and help you with. Um, our FAs, our PAs will literally come to your office, sit down with you and do training and help you understand how to submit um, a weekly report on your payroll so that your certified payroll goes through correctly. So, yeah. Very nice. You see, one of the other things that actually shows the investment and commitment that companies like RQ have, I mean, within their small business, because that's a benefit. I mean, you know, because not only is it setting it up to be able to do business with you within the federal government, let's just say it's a new company coming in, but they're going to be able to do that. Now you're teaching them, training them essentially how to work federal um, uh, business itself. And then they can go get another job with a whole different prime. And sure, here's one other thing. And I and believe me, Jeff, I know this is going to sound so you know rudimentary to you because you've been doing this for so long. Right. I mean, but um, are there any limits to the contracts that these guys can take on? Let's just say that there's a small business subcontractor, right? Mm -hmm. when it comes when it when, when it comes down to the capacity and it comes down to the bonding and it comes down to all of that kind of stuff. Like, are there limits that these small businesses will bump up against? And if there are, what are some of the things that they can do to make sure that that if they like this federal contracting game, what is it that they can do to come in and start playing and grow even more? I, I would think you actually mentioned uh, the majority of them, and that is, can you demonstrate that you can bond it? because uh, every single job requires bonding. Yeah. Um, and that's a big challenge. We work with people on that, but uh, your bonding capacity is gonna be huge. Um, looking at your workforce, do you have enough people to actually um, do the work that you're saying you wanna do? Right. Uh, can you demonstrate that? So uh, have you ever done anything that's close to this? You know, I mean, taking a leap from somebody who's just used to working on in residential work to taking on, you know, a, a, a large uh, contract with the government. There's that's a big difference. You know, big, just to, big, you know. Right. That's right. I yeah. mean, but that's not to say that they can't get an entryway into doing something or, or, or like, no. you know, I mean, because, no, not at all. Well, all right. So let's say that you guys find a small business and like they might not line up 100 percent, but like you like them, you like the work that they've done. Would would RQ give them a shot with something? Oh, for sure. For Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. And, and I always tell people this. Listen, uh, when I said it was a long game, bid like crazy. Anything that you get invited to, bid the bid it. Because when every time you turn in a bid, it's actually scored. That's actually kept there. We keep track of it. Our system automatically keeps track of it. And so if you become known as a person that consistently is helping us win work, right. you know, and, and you can, here's the nice thing about that is you can, we invite you to reach out to the estimator after the bid. Um, there are, there's a few little nuances that we have to make sure we work around, you know, yeah. once a bid has been awarded and if, especially if it hasn't been awarded to us, we will tell you anything you want to know. Um, but there is a, a bit of a competitive edge that the, the PM, you know, holds the information close to them until they've actually, yeah, you know, yeah. it's always that way. But yeah. always ask for um, for a review from the estimator. That is an excellent point. Right? Just, just make sure because that that's just going to make you get better every time. You know, they'll tell you if you're too high, they'll tell you, you know, too low. They'll tell you you were missing scope. You know, we think you were pretty far off on on quantities, you know, all that kind of stuff. Hey, they're they are there to help you get better at this. And I, I just say the more you bid, 
the better you're going to get. Your chances are going to go way up that eventually you're going to win a contract. So it's like highest probability, right? You yep. just keep, you keep going and then, then you get the feedback and then yep. you realize, okay, let me tweak this next time. It's, it's the same process essentially. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like we'll, we'll build software in the exact same way. Release it out there, figure out what's out. You know, we'll, we'll fix it. We'll see what the tweak yep. is. We'll go get, just keep getting better, better, better until we get that, until we knock over. Yeah. Movie, right. And the other thing I would want to bring up about this is that a lot of times people, especially if you're not used to working in the federal uh, market, is that it's going to be a long time before you actually, and it depends on the scope of work, right, that you're bidding on. But let's just say you're a finisher, you know, you do something with finishing, you're painting, you're doing tile, you're doing carpeting, whatever, you're at the end of the job. Yeah. And so uh, don't think, oh, I can't bid this, I'm too busy unless you don't know what you, how busy you're going to be for the next two or three years. Yeah. You know, these jobs are two to three year long jobs. And so, you know, we hear this all the time from people. They're like, oh, I can't, I can't possibly bid this. I've got a year's work, you know, already lined up. I, well, then that's perfect. This is the time to start bidding government work because it's going to be a year before you're going to even see that. So um, yeah, think of the long game. Don't let don't let the fact that you're busy right now today or even for the next six months hold you back from bidding. And when I say, when I talk about the bidding too, is design build work is very different than a hard bid. Yeah. So, uh, you know, everything, I would say almost 100% of what we do is design build. And it for a lot of people, it's just not their game because, you know, the designs are not all there. You're missing tons of information. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is give us um, units. You can give us unit pricing. And we rely on that unit pricing a lot. Will we hold you 100% to that when it comes time to perform? Absolutely not. You didn't have the drawings, but you helped us win. And so, you know, the estimators do their own takeoff. So they, they will have quantities. Sometimes, all you need to do is say, hey, give me the quantities and I'll tell you how much the unit price it will be. That alone could help an estimator a lot and um, an may help us win a job. So there's there's a there's a, a huge range of what you could do on a bid that would that, would, that can really help you, you know, but I would say at least give unit pricing, at give us unit pricing. Price. Yeah. Right. Because that helps the estimator. Yeah. And and then also be kind of aggressive within your pipeline. It sounds like like bid everything. Yeah. Yeah. Put yourself out there because everything gets counted. Yeah. Like, right. And, yeah. And if you don't bid, say it's okay. Like we understand. There's always circumstances where sure. you know yeah. you can't bid this. This one doesn't match. It doesn't fit, whatever it is. Sure. Decline it because the system knows you were engaged. So if you can't do the job and you don't want to do it, don't just ignore it. Actually decline it. Excellent. So a decline doesn't go against you. It means you were engaged and you actually opened the email and you cared enough to tell us, hey, sorry, but this time around, I'm not going to be able to do it. So make sure you de decline the, the bid invite. Is and that... maybe send a little note, right? Saying, hey, look, this might not be an exact bid. If if you can, yeah. because it's anything, yeah. it's, well, all of this, all of this, right, circles back to the way federal contracting works. It's, would you say it's all basically relationships? Oh, my gosh. You know, that, and that's basically. the thing, that, it, it, it constantly surprises me, because we're doing bigger and bigger, you know, larger and larger contracts all the time. It's still, it's all about relationships. All relationships, you know? right. You, yeah. It's those, those relationships and the long-term relationships that you've established with people that uh, that really do um, guarantee your success. Yep. Isn't that incredible? And 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 that 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 is the same because we work with companies across uh, virtually every spectrum or uh, mm -hmm. you know industry or category within the market. It's the same exact yeah. thing, all the way from the government side down, all the way to the smallest business. Yeah, it's all relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. so coming in, <clears throat> excuse me. So like coming into the market, right? Or and or already being in working in the federal market having and forming relationships with good quality, reputable companies, that's going to get you further the fastest. I mean, like mm -hmm. when it comes to, so helping to try to recognize that we can, we can we, you, like, which is some of your answers today, Jeff, that really, really will, will help these small, some small businesses really start figuring out 
it's not only just federal money because I'm sure everyone just sees dollar signs like, oh my goodness, federal money, dollars, right? right. Uh, so sure, but that's not the whole game. The whole, it's a lot about the relationships that you're forming and who you're forming them with, right? Def definitely, yeah. Same. Yeah, and, and definitely think of the long game. You know, it's, yeah. yes, it might take me a long time to win this contract, but once I actually get my foot in the door and I start working with this company, I might be working for them for years. Right. Look at that. Right. And, and so and that, that, that's another part of the relationship thing. It's like it comes in. Exactly. Like if if and, you know, we all act like, you know, like we're coming in and we're all grown ups and we're all doing and taking our businesses seriously. And we're going to come in and we say we're going to do this. So we are going to to to, to perform that. And yeah. that's what RQ does. Like, hey, all right, we got this work. You gave us a bid on this. Here is, and you know, like even with leeway to say, you know, we, you know we're not going to hold your feet to the fire on 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 the sourcing of the pricing that you gave us before. Right. You know, we deal in reality like everyone else. Right. So, right. As long as everyone does that, like that's good business, right? Exactly. And yeah. That's and and the forming relationship with companies like 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 that, and actually put that as a priority, like RQ does, really does. Um, that's how these small businesses can 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 start start to get a faster foothold, right? And then a stronger foothold, you know, because yeah. then, then you just branch out. You just have to come in. You have to perform. But the number one thing is is is, is for 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 them to uh, start engaging, you know, you know, because there are companies just like our our Q that that um, have the same need, right? We need more subcontractors, or or like yeah. would you say that there's a bit of a shortage right right now, or like are you guys having a bit of a hard time finding subs for some for some jobs? Absolutely, there's a shortage everywhere. And I would say, you know, there's a shortage of subcontractors. There's a shortage of manpower, mm -hmm. you know, so those companies themselves finding enough people to do the work. Um, but uh, it's that isn't necessarily a negative thing. That's a, there's oh. a ton of opportunities that come with that. Um, and I, I don't know that most companies know this, but because we're a large business, we are required by the government to give certain percentages of our work has to be subcontracted to small RFP. business. That's right. And I would say, and the RFPs vary a little bit, but not a whole lot off of this, anywhere from 20, 25, 26% of, of the total value of that contract has to be given to small businesses. So well, even if a company yeah. comes in and says, hey, we're, you know, we self-perform a ton of our work, it doesn't matter. They're still going to have to give that 20, 23, 24% to a small business. And that, by the way, is the minimum. So that's right. The actually. percentages are much higher than that. That's what we normally achieve. You know, our percentages are well over the 40 and oh, 50, yeah. 40 and 50% um, that are going to small businesses. So now, Oh, uh, excellent point. Before we leave that point, okay. So you know, yeah. because construction is treated a little bit differently, right? You know, because so like larger prime contractors, SEIC, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, like they they all have the same uh, percentage constraints. They have to give out a certain percentage of their work to small business, right? Right. Four main categories. Uh, it's eight A, woman owned, service disabled, veteran owned, and mm -hmm. then um, what is the last one? Jeff Hubzo, right? Okay. So those are the four main that that get get counted. Okay. So there's, there's a minimum construction. My theory is because there's so, so much money that is run through these construction projects. It's almost expected to where prime construction companies like our, our Q are almost expected to have a much higher percentage of small business participation because oh, yeah. there's, there's a lot of dollars that, that flow through these construction projects that can really, really help, you know, like really spur a lot of small business growth. I mean, when it comes down to it, it's just a lot, it's a good pass through. Right. And so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, with that, would you say that if you had a bid, let's say you're going up for this piece of work, right? And you had your team together, and let's say you, you had a really, really healthy percentage of small businesses that, you know, that, that are on that particular bid versus, or now, uh, would you say that that's a differentiator between some of your competitors that might not have as, much, as many small businesses on their particular proposal? Do you think that that's something that might help our, you know, RQ actually win more federal contracts with more small businesses on your team? Is that how you look at it? Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that is, you know, a, a differentiator because I don't, okay. I don't know that information um, that okay. our that our competitors have. Um, I do know that within certain regions, um, after we've been there for a while, we have really good subcontractors that are repeat, oh. 
they want to work with us. And That's the repeat. Back. There's there's the they, relationship stuff coming. Yeah, back, right? and so okay. yes, they come back every time. Yeah, okay. and 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 a lot of times they will flat out tell you, yes, you're getting an exclusive price. Wow, excellent. You see, so we'll down to the, the relationships again too. I mean. That's just, that's yeah. just what works. It's, it's, it, and it, it's, it, it always fascinates me too, Jeff, you know, because we're such a large industry. There were 600,000 plus companies within the federal space. Quick question. And now this is something that's going to go straight to the small businesses too. Do you only engage with small businesses that are registered in SAM.gov or do you engage with other kinds of construction companies that are not registered as federal contractors? We engage with all. So the government itself can't require you to be registered as a subcontractor in SAM. So um, it's almost kind of silly not to be registered, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not really sure what the reasons anyone would have for not being registered because it's such a great resource um, for us. You know, we are constantly um, using Teaming Pro uh <laughs> to go look for small businesses and a lot of that info is being pulled from sam or other government you know yes uh, website so exactly. um definitely why not, right? i would say if you're not you're shooting yourself in the foot because that's one huge area where you're going to be missing out on a lot of people who are looking for you totally agree yeah i mean it's, it's just another place to be found when it comes down to it right and, yeah uh, but but if someone's not in SAM, I mean, but there's a construction company that's a small yep. business that wants to come into the space. They don't have to be in SAM in order to no. start doing business with RQ Construction. Nope. That's what it comes down to, right? Okay. You're right. Okay. Yep. Good stuff. You bet. <laughs> Jeff, yeah. um, I, I, I've i taken up so much of your precious time and I want to thank you so much for uh, coming on and helping the small businesses, helping us learn more, of course, about, about how, how RQ is doing business within federal space. But really, really, you know, you know, just give me some great answers for these small business owners, small, small, small business entrepreneurs, really, in, in most of the cases, right, who want to come in, get a slice of that American dream, right, start, start, start growing something of their own. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you just helped a whole lot of companies figure out or, 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 or just learn that uh, there are businesses, huge companies, just like RQ Construction, that are not only out there to, you know, to, to go and partner with, but help and mentor and support yeah. and are looking for you small businesses and who want to come into this market and actually start engaging within the federal contracting industry. Um, so I can't thank you enough for all that, Jeff, for, for, for helping to um, spread this good information about how these guys can uh, start coming in and start engaging. Right. It goes both ways. Oh, we, we appreciate uh, you getting our name out there and uh, yeah, anything we can, any of us, any, anything any of us can do, to get more small businesses involved in federal contracting yes. is, is great. That's a goal we all have. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's that's it's really just better for everybody, you know, because there's more, there's more competition, there's more skills, right? Yeah. There's there's good price, better pricing. I mean, more competition brings in better pricing. There's and sure. there's there's and this pie is so big, Jeff. Like, would you say like, mm -hmm. like so, so, so the federal construction market, that's a pretty big market. Yeah. There's Huge. a lot going on. Yeah. And it's not like it's, it, you know, like all that stuff just like comes in, like dries up or goes away like this. You know, the, there are max, there are contracts out there that are constantly coming out. Where large companies just like RQ are constantly looking for subcontractors, qualified subcontractors. Right. Mm -hmm. But a couple of things that we wanted to do today was to try to demystify a couple of those things. You don't have to be in SAM. Mm -hmm. Right. You can right. use past performance for stuff that you've done now because you're right. You don't want to come in and try to just be a prime if you're coming brand new into the market. That's that's what sure. we teach subcontract or teach companies too, small businesses. Come sure. in as a sub, find partners just like our, you know, RQ Construction, mm -hmm. and then uh, start start getting a uh, building your federal contracting or your federal past performance along with your other stuff. And yeah. before you know it, you're out there looking for subcontractors yourself, right, Jeff? That's pretty much how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. That's awesome. Excellent. Well, Jeff, thank you very, very, very much for your time today. Uh, we at Teamy Pro, we very much appreciate it. And for, for everyone, um, it, please feel feel free because Jeff, I would think that you would welcome this. If you're a small you business bet. federal contracting space, please reach out to Jeff Holmes, Small Business Program Manager, rqconstruction.com. Is that correct, Jeff? Yes. My email is actually the letter of my first name. So J and my last name, Holmes, H-O-L-M-E-S at rqconstruction.com. Love to hear from you guys.
Jeff, thank you very so much. Really, really appreciate your time coming on the podcast today. Everyone, this is Teaming Pro um, signing off. Uh, thank you very much for um, coming in and watching the interview with Jeff Holmes. Um, please stay tuned for uh, more uh, podcasts to follow.